I understand what it feels like to be renting out an apartment or renting out a house. It feels like that you're throwing money away instead of buying a house and building up that equity. Buying a house either for an investment property or as your home, it's a dream for many of us. But for many people, saving up for a down payment is a huge task and it feels like that you can never accomplish it. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to save up for that down payment to either put towards an investment property or towards a home. The first thing you need to do is you actually need to come up with a budget. You need to figure out how much money is coming into your bank account every single month and how much you are spending. Then after that, you need to figure out what expenses you can cut back on. Some of these things can be Netflix, going out to eat, and honestly, that's one of my biggest weaknesses is I love to go out to eat. Whenever I was creating my budget about four or five years ago to start cutting back on some expenses, eliminate some debt, so I can start eventually saving up for a down payment, that was one of the things I really had to cut back on was going out to eat and actually doing that, I was I ended up saving about another $100 to $200 every single month. This might not be you, you might be you know, not going out to eat, you like cooking at home, but you also have four or five different streaming services, Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, you know, Paramount, etc. So I bet you don't watch all of those. And yeah, those $10 a month here and there might not seem a lot in the moment, but they do add up over time. Once you have a budget in place, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to get a separate account specifically for your savings account. Not only is this going to help you stay on track on things, but it's going to help you realize, you know, some of the expenses that you didn't really need. Also, there's just something about seeing an account growing bigger and bigger and bigger, and it almost kind of turns into a game to see how big you can get this account. To add on top of this, what I want you to do is I want you to automate your savings. And this is a game changer for me and my financial freedom journey because whenever I was starting to automate my savings, this allowed me to get creative with some of my expenses. So some of the things that I needed in my life, I was able to get creative with it. So like for food, for example, I was telling you about that. I like to go out to eat. Well, whenever I was automating my savings and profit first, I get to that in just a second. But whenever I was automating my savings account, I didn't have this big lump of money in my checking account to go out there and go out to eat, you know, four or five times a week. I was able to only go out there once or twice a week. I kind of jumped ahead about the profit first, but here's a little tidbit about it. Profiting first means that you put money from your income, so your check into your savings account. So this is where the automated savings account comes into play. And if you want to know how you can actually automate it without you having to get involved, just call your bank, ask them like, hey, can you put 20, 30% of my income into the savings account? And whenever you do that, it's just going to automatically do it and you don't have to think about it. But profiting first means that you take profit first. You take your income and you're paying yourself first. This means that at the end of the month, the money that you're left with, you need to be able to come up and pay the bills. In your head, this allows you to get creative with some of the things that you thought were expensive, some of the things that you thought you needed. So let's just say you thought you needed the Hulu and the Netflix, but actually you only watch Disney Plus. Well, now you can eliminate those two subscription services and now you're saving $30 a month. This is one of the biggest game changers for me because I was making about, I think it was like $3,500, $4,000 a month. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna start stashing away $1,000 a month. And before that, I was actually saving, you know, $100 a month. So that was a big jump for me. But in the end, I was actually able to get creative with some of the things I thought were expenses when they weren't expenses, and I was able to save that thousand dollars a month. By doing this, this is gonna allow you to build up your savings account and see it get bigger and bigger and bigger, and ultimately put a down payment on a house. Here's another way that you can save up for a down payment on a house, but in reality, it's not really saving up for a down payment at all. What I want you to do is I want you to go into Google and I want you to type in government programs in whatever city, whatever state that you're living in. This is going to pull up a bunch of different grants, low interest loans, etc., for you to be able to apply for. And whenever you get accepted that or approved for that loan, that grant, whatever it is, they're going to fund your down payment. But of course you need to qualify for this, but it's worth the try if they're willing, if the government is willing to pay your entire down payment for you. Another way that you can save up for a down payment is whenever you're renting out an apartment, let's just say you're renting out a two bedroom. Well, let's also say that that two bedroom, uh, the second bedroom is not doing anything for you. Well, you're living in one of the bedrooms. Why don't you just rent out the other bedroom? You can cut your rent in half and that money, let's say a thousand dollars a month is what you're renting for. And you rent out the other bedroom for $500 a month. 
Well, you just cut your expenses in half. Now that $500 can go into a separate savings account like we just talked about, and you can start building it bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually you have enough money for a down payment. Another way that you can save up for a down payment, and I think it goes without saying that you need to increase your income if you want to save up for a down payment. This is going out there and getting a side hustle like YouTube, getting a blog, wholesaling, real estate, etc., etc., etc. There's so many different side hustles out there that you can make money and start stashing that away again in your separate savings account. This is honestly all about what you want to make your priority. Do you want to sit on your couch and watch, you know, your Netflix because you you canceled out Hulu, Disney Plus, etc. You want to sit on your couch and watch Netflix, or do you want to go out there and drive for Uber Eats? You want to drive for DoorDash? You want to do these different type of side hustles? and you want to make more money so you can save up for a down payment. It's all about what you want. It's all about setting up priorities. I did this exact thing whenever I was saving up for my first down payment on my investment property. I went out there, I started working for Uber Eats, I started working for DoorDash, I was delivering food, you know, let's just say it was about four times a week, and I was making $200 extra every single week. That means I was stashing $800 a month just by doing my separate side hustle. Another way that you can save up for a down payment on a house is by negotiating your rent. Wherever you're renting out right now, you can go up to your property manager and ask them, hey, you know, I'm having some issues with, you know, saving money, getting a down payment, whatever, whatever you want to come up with to negotiate your rent, do that. Let's say that you have a 12 month lease and you're 11 months into that lease. Well, the property manager thinking that you're going to move out instead of moving out, go up to that property manager and say, Hey, you know, I know I was paying a thousand dollars a month in rent. Can we please lower that to about $900 a month? And I will stay on for another 12 to 24 months. Obviously you're probably not going to be staying for those 12 to 24 months because you're saving up for a down payment on the house. You're going to be moving out, but this is a way to negotiate your rent to lower your expenses. That way you can put more money into your savings account. This next way is not necessarily a way to save up for a down payment, but it's to lower your threshold. What you can do is you can go and you can apply for an FHA loan where you want to put three and a half to 5% down on a property. And as long as you're living in that property, you can buy it for that low. If you're looking at to buy this as an investment property, you can still do this. You can still, let's say you buy a single family home and like I said, you can rent out the rooms. Well, now you're gonna be living mortgage free because the people that are living in the other rooms are gonna be paying for your mortgage. This can also happen if you're living in a two to four unit, you know, buying a duplex, triplex, or fourplex. You can live in one of the units and rent out the rest. Well, if you're buying this piece of property to be your home to live in, yeah, your monthly costs are going to be higher, but now you're in that property and you're going to be building equity month after month. So if you're able to make those higher payments, an FHA loan, any type of low down payment program, it's going to be a viable option for you. Before you go out there and you're buying a house, buying for an investment property, buying it to be a home, you need to be doing a ton of research on these properties. So here in this YouTube channel, I teach everything about real estate, real estate investing. So if you're interested in learning more about real estate and real estate investing, hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video just like this one, teaching you everything that you need to know. There's gonna be a video popping up on your screen right now that I picked out specifically for you that I think you're going to enjoy. So if you're interested, click on that video that's on your screen. But until next video, I'm out, see ya.